Welcome to SMT's 10 and 10, where you get the top 10 space news stories in less than 10 minutes. On this week's show, we feature Crazy Post on X, Starship Flight 8, New Zealand Rocket Launch, SpaceX Goes for 450, Absolutely Insane Lunar Footage, all this and more next on SNT. 60 seconds. This week, coming in at number 10, on February 19th, 2025, NASA completed the stacking of the SLS boosters in preparation for Artemis II manned flight to the moon. While this program has been the talk of the town because of its extraordinary cost, the boosters are ready to fly. We here at SNT are hoping for at least the first two flights and SLS missions to happen. Coming in at number 9 this week, a February 1st Falcon 9 launch resulted in a second stage developing an oxygen leak, and this leak caused the second stage to not be able to do a controlled burn for deorbit over a planned area and resulted in uncontrolled reentry and burn up over Europe. ASAP Aerospace Advisory Panel member Kent Rominger was quoted as saying, when you look at these recent incidents over the last handful of weeks, it does lead one to say it's apparent that operating safely requires significant attention to detail as hardware ages and the pace of operations increase. That's odd. Every Falcon 9 second stage is a new piece of equipment that is not reused. So we're a bit confused by this government employee statement. It's almost as if ASAP isn't familiar with the Falcon 9 second stage. How is it that a government employee who evaluates spaceflight safety doesn't know how the SpaceX Falcon 9 system works? That's concerning. SpaceX needs to find and fix any potential points in the oxygen system on the second stage where leaks could occur but these systems are never reused by SpaceX. They are built, flown, and destroyed upon a controlled reentry over unoccupied Earth's surface, usually in the Pacific Ocean. This week, coming in at number eight, the Mechazilla chopsticks at Pad B are now operational for grasping movement. Check out this video from Lab Padre Space. In tentative flight plan for IFT-9, there's also potentially a chance for these chopsticks to catch Ship 35 after an orbital flight. Booster 16 will be caught at Pad A after IFT-9, and if IFT-8 is successful, the Starship will be caught on these chopsticks. Now that's exciting. This week, coming in at number 7, Cameron County Judge Trevino has signed a proclamation for Starbase Texas to become its own city. It's official. Starbase is now a city. That's so cool. This area has grown from a desolate beach town east of Brownsville, Texas, and one of the most advanced rocket manufacturing and launching complexes in the world. Very exciting times we're living in. Coming in at number six, Rocket Lab launches Fasten Your Space Belts. Turn up the volume and listen to this mess. We are on our way to space with Electron. There's no doubt that Rocket Lab's Electron rocket and its Rutherford engines have a great sound. Rocket Lab's mics on their launch facilities are second to none. I love listening to their launches and watching the Electron leap from the pad. And here you see the Electron's second stage igniting and those batteries that they'll eventually drop are right there in front of the engine in the, in the shot. But at any rate, this was a great launch by Rocket Labs of their Electron rocket. We're so excited to see what the Neutron rocket will bring in the future. Way to go, Rocket Lab and Peter Beck. We're proud of you. This week, coming in at number five, NSF has uncovered plans that may include a a catch of the Starship 35 at Tower B at Starbase. There's a chance we may have a glimpse of both the booster and the Starship cradled in the arms of both towers after Flight 9. This will be a historically significant achievement towards rapid reusability by SpaceX and is mondo exciting. This week, coming in at number four, the hot staging ring was seen outside the Mega Bay so that Booster 15 is now probably topped with the hot staging ring. And they're probably in the process of loading the faux Starlink satellites on Ship 34 for the upcoming IFT-8, which is scheduled to launch no earlier than February 26 at 5.30 p.m. Central Time, USA. Federal regulatory approvals are in and SpaceX is ready. This week, 
Coming in at number three, Elon Musk stirred quite a bit of poop storm with several posts and responses on X, including being very critical of the ISS commander Mogensen. Uh, I don't condone some of his language here, but at any rate, it stirred quite a bit of controversy on the X platform. I did ask the Grok AI interface the question, were astronaut Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore left on ISS for political reasons and received this reply? We here at SNT do think that it's quite probable that NASA, in an effort to minimize the embarrassment to Boeing, did keep the astronauts on the ISS longer than they needed to be. It's easily foreseeable that this was a possibility and that Elon is telling the truth about the potential earlier rescue mission. Those of us who aren't privy to the comms between Elon, SpaceX, and NASA or between Elon, SpaceX, and the Biden administration will never know the content of those conversations. Sunni and Butch will always be professionals and they will probably not talk about anything that drifts from the corporate line and NASA. I do believe that Sonny and Butch are brave superhero astronauts and I'm proud of their mission on the ISS that was greatly prolonged in everything that they have accomplished. This week coming in at number two, Falcon 9 has flown six times since our last episode, including a landing in the Bahamas, the first time a first stage has ever landed in another country. This particular launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 is the 450th flight, which is seen here in this video. Here on this particular flight, you can see the plume extending as we're two minutes into flight and we're preparing for staging as the Falcon 9 Second stage prepares to separate from the first stage booster. Here we go, stage sep. Off we go, ignition. Here are the grid fins deploying, preparing to guide the booster down to a successful landing. On the drone ship. Stage one entry burn startup. Here we go on the entry burn as the Falcon 9 booster is slowing itself down on re entry to the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And then about a minute after entry burn shut down, we get the landing burn initiated as she comes down into the drone ship. Stage two, internal guidance. Landing leg deploy. And just like that, we have the 450th successful mission. Stage one landing confirmed. In this other video by Lab Padre, SpaceX Booster 1080 that made its international landing returns here to Port Canaveral, while in the background another Falcon 9 launches. This is the tempo. Right here, Lab Padre captures the booster and the Falcon 9 in the same shot. That's just incredible. What incredible luck and timing. And finally, this week, coming in at number one, Firefly Aerospace Blue Ghost Lander is in a circularized lunar orbit. Look at this incredible video they took of the topography on the moon. This is some of the most unique video footage of the surface of the moon that we have ever seen. They're tentatively scheduled to land on March 2nd, 2025. We'll keep you up to date on landing times. We'll probably live stream the landing as SNT's first live stream, unless I live stream IFT8. That'll do it for this week. We'll catch you next week on SNT. Sixty seconds. That's one.